in Java, if you want to write any Java Bean class, this is how you would do. So by the way, I'm a big fan of online games. So you see here we are declaring a eSport class, our eSport player class, where we are defining some data members like character ID or player name or the city. And then with Java Bean class, you have these predefined or you can say boilerplate methods which comes in like getters and setters or hash code equal. So if I want to define this same thing in Kotlin, how would I do it? Well, all I have to do is write just this single line of code. That's it. I'm done. Right? It's magical, right? As Cat uh, mentioned. So it is equivalent to what you just saw in your Java Win class. So here what we have is properties, the character ID, the player in-game name or city. And what basically we are doing here is we are using this Kotlin data class, which is used to hold the data and which kind of adds all your boilerplate code to, uh, code to it. So uh, all the methods like equals hash code is still included. In. So let's just see this in action, how we would use it. So to use it, we have a main function with us. And if I want to use this particular class, we will create an object. So I create a player one object and uh, I pass the argument to the constructor, my character ID, 2345, and then the Lalit name and the city Delhi. Now, because I created the properties mutable, like Kat mentioned in the um, uh, you know earlier slides, that you can have properties either mutable or immutable. Because I have created mutable, I will have both equivalent setters and getters. So basically in Kotlin, we don't really call them setters and getters. It's it's more of accessing properties or setting properties. So here I can change the property of Delhi or the city uh, to Bangalore. So you see the by using this dot operator here, uh, I'm changing the property. And similarly, I can access the property with this dot operator. So in the string template, I'm kind of accessing what the values of my player one object is. In the same way, I can copy the object, one object to another object also. And that we do with the help of this boilerplate code copy, which is kind of equivalent to clone uh, in your Java B. So, and if you want to make some changes, little changes to your, uh, let's say, um, uh, current object that also you can do within the copy itself. So isn't it cool? So you don't have to write all that boilerplate code, just a few lines of code and you are good to go. Now, most of you might ask me, uh, there are good IDs out there who can generate that code for me. That's true. They can, they can generate that code, but you will have to maintain that code. And at any point of time, if you make changes, you will have to remember that and then make the changes to that class. But uh, Kotlin gives you this right out of the bat that you just write one little statement and then you don't have to really worry about the maintaining the code. Okay, with that, uh, and just to give you the, how exactly the output would look like, um, First player name, Lalit Singh, and the Bangalore is the city. Second player name, Mortal, and the Pune. So you guys can guess which game I'm talking about. So if you have guessed it right, just go ahead in the chat and post your answers. OK. Let's talk about a little bit about the code safety, how Kotlin is more safer. So the very first uh, code safety feature I want to talk about is this billion dollar mistake, which at my childhood or my early stages of learning language, I did a lot. Uh, this null pointer exception, right? So with Kotlin, you don't have to worry about it as uh, in, in this way that you cannot really set any variable to null until and unless you make it a nullable type. So here, uh, this, uh, we have an example. Let's say we have a player name and we want to set it to null. You cannot do that compiler with flag and error. If you really want to set it to null, you have to first make it a nullable type. And the way to do that is by using a question mark operator. And now you can a variable null. And that too, let's say I want, I'm, uh, I'm kind of operating or accessing a nullable type. Uh, that will also kind of flag an error for me. So you don't have to wait for the runtime, which I think is a pretty cool feature and uh, saves a lot of time. Not just with the nullability, we have, uh, we have features like like autocast. Uh, so let's say you have uh, you want you are checking the type two different types and um, here in my example I have uh, any 
type. So any type is the super type for all the non-nullable types. And if there is a uh, object which is equivalent to eSport player, then uh, automatically the Kotlin is autocasted and you can use it uh, in your program also. So these are few features of your code safety. And another um, another thing or another feature we want to definitely you know highlight here is interoperability. Now, interoperability is a feature where you don't have to worry about whether uh, uh, whether I have to you know learn both Java and Kotlin to write my code. No, if even if you have let's say uh, Java libraries or code written, you can still use it within your um, within your Kotlin code. So just to give you uh, or show you this with an example. See here, so we have here uh, the um, a class, a Java class list, right? An array list. So if you, all the Java programmers, if you know in which package the list and array class comes in, go ahead, post your answers there. So we have a class which are written in Java and you can see that we are still able to use that class within a Kotlin code, just like it is the part of Kotlin code. So you don't have to worry about that. And even uh, let's say I have a calendar class, which is written in Java, and I have some features, let's say getters or setters, which are defined in again in Java. You can still make use of those in your um, Kotlin code. So what that means uh, for a developer or an Android developer is, so even if you have, let's say, a code which is written or an application or a library which is written in Java, you can interchangeably kind of, or you can uh, use that Java code within your Kotlin Android app also, the new Kotlin Android app also. You don't have to worry about whether the all the features will work or not. 